Alrighty. Operations Committee, subject is the 2017-2022 Capital Program Phase 4, sales tax. I move to approve the reallocation. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 But I have a question. Second by Cindy. I mean, yeah, Cindy. Cindy, the question. Mm -hmm. So, what's before us is reallocations, and I, I think I've seen one of these exact programs or schools with this same project reallocated earlier. Are we reallocating? I thought we had reallocated some funds from Garrett's painting in our last meeting. I don't keep reallocating funds from the same school over and over. Do you, do you happen to, re I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Do you think we added money and now we're taking it away, or do you think we're. I think you reallocated from that school and you're reallocating okay. from that school again. So that's probably because we wanted to make sure that we didn't move all the money away in case there was an invoice that came in like that or if there was a little bit of work left over <laughs> and now that it's done and there's clarity about the funds that were available and what's what we can commit to something else so, we, we so feel the project more comfortable. is complete right yes the project complete. is complete it's complete so. so that project's complete and now we've got this leftover money we might that that makes perfect sense but do you see what we're seeing we're seeing two sets of money is there a way we can get a summary report of completed projects I, I don't know what it would look like we can talk offline but it just looks like we're taking money from the same schools more than one time and we need to make sure that that's for a, like you said a, a, a reason okay sure any other questions I don't, the only question i have is could you um in producing what Cindy's asking for. Um, but is, is that, sorry, I'm there. Is that, is that information not already someplace? I hate so, to be So in the five-year plan that Ron updated last month, it list, listed each school <coughs> and projects completed through year one, year two, and into year three. So that list from the last board meeting, school by school, mm -hmm. shows the dollar amount for every one of those projects in capital maintenance. So we should be able to look at that report that shows you what that the final amount, if it's if it was final, mm -hmm. okay, or if it's projected to be done, right. what the projected amount is for the next five years. How would right? that correlate right. to us um, yeah. reallocating money from those projects? There are projects on there Correct. that you may in the future reallocate money from, and there are projects on there that have new budgets because we've reallocated in the past. So, so, so every year, it. Ron we provides you the new update. So as the year goes through adjustments are made if projects are completed there's money left over we assign it to the next projects in the in the queue mm -hmm. and at the end of the year you get that reconciliation of all of them which again was provided what, what data does it reconcile it the shows, original budget and how much you it, actually spent it shows the final amount but it doesn't show it compare it reconciled to the original budget Correct. in the same document that's what we need you see what we're looking at yeah you know we, we're going to get a document that says we spent two million dollars mm -hmm. at school c but then the onus is on us to remember that that budget was four million and that we reallocated one million six months ago. How do how do you help us keep that track of information? We'll have to take a look at yeah. Matt. So, are you trying to? How can I help you understand what happened with that project? <laughs> Will you want to keep track? I don't necessarily understand what happened because, like I said, if a project is two million dollars and it's completed, right. I don't want to go to a community and say we completed your two million dollar project and they show me the thing where I approved a four million dollar project six months ago, but in between we reallocated money. So there's got to be some way for us to be able to track from beginning mm -hmm. to end, just just in terms of numbers, not necessarily in terms of whys, but. Right. That you, you see, we're, we we always get the budget, but we don't ever get told this is, and we don't have it in the same document as what the original budget was. It's on it's on us to start finding all those pieces of paper from different meetings. Yeah. And it gets it gets difficult because we have so many different projects and so many so uh, many reallocations of absolutely. funds. So we can't keep up with mm -hmm. with projects are completed, with projects have been reallocated, <coughs> funds going here, 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 and here, and then. And then three months from now, we're getting the same request to do more projects. <coughs> it's, it's difficult for us to really put a, a finger on total cost, proposed cost, actual cost, and then reallocation of, of funds going somewhere else. So if you guys can help us do that, we don't know 
we can't do it for you, but we're just going to be the recipient of that information. Well, can can we can we moving forward maybe then uh, maybe just add another column in the next report mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. up uh, moving forward. Uh, if this is something that the mm -hmm. information right, so we, the board well, wants to see. We have a very hey, clear hang example that happened in the last 45 minutes. No, hey, hang on a second. Not, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm fin let me finish. What? So <laughs> <we're not finished. laughs> he was talking. He was talking. But we have a, we have a very clear example of the school. We're not funding. And now you have it on this thing that we just approved to take money from. That's, that's your crux of your problem. How do we go back to our community and say that? And so going forward, we can put this on there, Eric, but how do we justify taking money from a, from a school that w has been very well publicized in need of money? So as I was so, saying, if we could just simply add a column mm -hmm. um, with the additional information moving forward with wherever, if the pro and I believe you gave them a large spreadsheet, maybe you need to just send us a large spreadsheet and just you know, indicate, but just add another column of some sort of that's the additional information that board members are requesting showing where the variance of the project may have came from, where it moved to, uh, and, and that way that information will be there. Uh, I think the, easy, the, the easiest, oh, thing, the the easiest thing we can do is to show the original project cost that right. we had planned, right. mm -hmm. and if it's executed at a different cost, to show you in that line of where the money went is because we're taking small increments of that and moving it to the next projects on the list would be very hard. But and I'm not looking, asking well, for that. You're, asking you're looking for the, for the start and the finish. And the reconciliation, right. What was well, the original budget? What was the ending spent? Well, it shows me right. what if the scope the changes. Budget, right. Right. While we're doing the work, um, there might be a, a scope change because so-and-so asked for something and yeah, that makes sense, or a teacher <laughs> moved or a, something closed. So I'm not sure that just the dollar figure is going to give you the answer. You're, then it's going to be, well, why did it change? Well, because yeah. uh, there was a scope change or an unforeseen condition or a, uh, you know. But, but shouldn't, shouldn't that be explained, though? I mean, I understand well, things happen when it comes to construction. I understand that. But if, if the nine of us are responsible for the monies allocated and how mm. projects get completed, when things happen on your guys' end and decisions have to be made, you come to us. We need to have that information so we can say to people who come to us, well, Chris, how could you reallocate so and so so and so? Well, North Charleston gets everything. Right, Chris would need to know. He <laughs> would need to be able to say that. Well, so, the, so the way we've approached this program in the past is that we, you have all have approved the projects themselves in the initial amount and any changes. So if if it's if the board wants to pull itself into reviewing this to a, doing the scope so let's say you've approved a painting project at Garrett repaint the whole school mm -hmm. and we have an amount for it and during that analysis Ron determines one of those classrooms you know really needs three coats of paint and not one or there's a special color in one of those rooms that's going to cost a little more we believe as long as it's within the, the scope of the work as long as you're within the dollar amount, we have the authority at our level to execute right, that. Right, right. That's not what Sydney's saying. Sydney's saying if you got to reallocate, if you have to come to us to reallocate money to do that project, we'd like to know where that money's coming from. So and where's project. it going? And where's it going? What, That's could, all. We, could we do this? Could you, could you guys come back to us at some point with a proposed way that you suggest it would be best for us <coughs> to know? Here was the original budget, and here's what the final budget was, and if, and you know, I mean. Obviously, we don't get into the change of scope on paint colors and that kind of stuff, but something that you can provide to us, because so somebody might say, well, why didn't you spend, you know, why is this less? You know, so we know what the original was and we know what the end is. And then we can figure out uh, mm -hmm. if the majority of us want, you know, more details than that on exactly why it changed. Okay. Would that work to do that? I think so. That, that worked. So, so then you, you guys, then we can see. Because in the last four months, we've reallocated $187,000 from one school. I think that could be just, I don't think there's a problem with having done that, but if I don't sit here and go through every single set of minutes, I'm only being asked today to talk about reallocating 30,000. Well, it was 33,000 last month and 113,000 two months before that. Right. I just want us to be able to have something that we can keep that straight. So we understand we're not reallocating 30,000, we're reallocating 150. So what a I variance. Think, I don't think that it's important that we know why or that there's a lot of detail, but we have an expectation that the budget we approve is the budget y'all spend. When it varies, any other business would just wrap that up and say, well, here's the action. 
So moving forward with a variance description, then I don't even uh, need a description. I just oh. need the dollars. Okay. Then you wouldn't know what the dollars are for if you don't have a description. And like Kate said, it may not need to be explained. Okay. It need to be explained. Then I Todd, you want to say something? To yeah. Uh, yeah, just that I feel like we're getting wrapped around the axle. Yep. This yeah. is capital maintenance that uh, either needs to happen or doesn't. It's not an equity issue as long as all of our right. schools are functioning and sure. same. But I, I don't think the conversation is about the, that particular piece. I just think about it's about something else. But I see your point. Mm -hmm. so, yes. And, and, oh, yes. Um, I was just going to add from the financial standpoint. Um, these are year two 2018 projects approved in the capital maintenance plan last fall. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you all would have that document with the original budgets. Mm -hmm. So when we reallocate, the approved budget is either that original budget or to your point, Ms. Coates, we might have reallocated something um, in prior months. So the approved budget column is the current budget for that project and then the variance is what we're adding or subtracting mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me in this reallocation list excuse me and then the proposed budget is what that new proposed revised budget will be for that project because we have to track that on the financial side everything that moves so we have all that documentation got it with, got any, it. Okay. with, with <laughs> no more with no more conversation to call it hook Oh, crap. Problems? I'm sorry. Yes. Um, when you, in such allocation, it is coming from the, from the school project as <laughs> well, from, it's coming from the overall capital maintenance plan, the dollars. It's coming from the task that's identified within the project, which is a school. Yeah. And I don't have all the stuff that's in there as access to. I just have the basic ride that will my, my agenda. Oh, so that, that's what I'm asking. So, <laughs> speak about Garrett just for a moment. Have, have we done. Hmm? No, I didn't see. Have we used our dollars to secure the building that uh, there are no other intrusions or roads or anything? Have we, have we have we secured the building and we're comfortable that we're not going to have a problem in the future? Um, that's going to be an ongoing uh, effort for probably the next couple of months. Um, we caught one in the media center last week, the week before that, none. Mm -hmm. um, I've cleared the ditch behind the school. I've gone over the school several times. I've removed storage sheds. I've removed old tires. I've removed all kinds of things from around the school. I'm mean, just kind of doing it. Keep, keep doing well, it. Are we treating the outside of the property? Do Absolutely. Treat the outside? Yeah. We have traps outside. We have traps inside. Mm -hmm. We have rodent blocks outside. It's just. So, so there has to be. So has to be one of entry somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely, and there's 66 exterior doors at Garrett right. versus mm -hmm. 26 at North Charleston High School, plus there are 13 roll-up doors, right. which aren't sealed mm -hmm. as well as a typical door, and they tend to be left open more often because that's what you do. You open it and you do stuff and then you close so it. They don't, they don't so close, they don't close back automatically? They're roll-up doors. I'm talking roll about the, the roll-up doors. For delivery and stuff? Yeah. No, no, for the ARC where the CTE programs are mm -hmm. and where um, deliveries are made to the teacher supply cabinet, and things like that. So it's just a complicated, or it's a, it takes a lot of work to keep Garrett secure, and I'm, I'm on it. I promise so you, I'm getting a report every week. Well, so what I, I mean, I believe, is, but what I'm asking is that the money you're allocating from Garrett, maybe we might end up needing some of that same money. So we get the problem under control and maybe make some improvements to the building. Well, I, I'm ha happy to do that. I would come and ask you to do that. This is just paint money that I, I finished the painting. So right. I'm saying, well, let's use that paint money for something else. It's just paint money only. Right. It's Yes, sir. It's just painting it, Garrett, in this case. All right. All right. So I'm using GOF and FCO for other projects, day-to-day mm -hmm. -day stuff with pest control mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Multi-tiered effort. All right. Where are we reallocating this money to? The at the bottom there are seven projects um, that are growing. I see them now. I'm sorry, the ones that no are problem. growing. Oh, no problem. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With that being said, be, everybody's, everybody's getting ready to vote. Should be able to put your vote on your screen. Uh -huh. Okay. Next one is uh, item B. Fixed cost of ownership for classroom sure. modernization. Michael, can we just make sure we okay, there you go. Got it. Okay? Sorry, people. Right. So as Mr. Miller said, the next presentation of the FCO FY18 recap, we come to you every year um, to present to you the results of the funding that you provide us. In this case, about a year and a half ago, on, on 1 May 2017, we received uh, this money. Uh, we executed about 35% uh, of it within the first four months. 
actually paid it out and encumbered, which means we had contracts lined up for about 60%. So you can see most of the work is done in the first summer, which would have been the summer of last year. And then through the remainder of the next 12 months, we work to close that program out. Um, there's 16 programs. I'm going to show pictures of, of most of those programs. We received $31.9 million in this program. All of this is an eye chart. It, it shows you the distribution across all of the constituent districts. And I would just caution not to compare apples to apples on this one. This could be a $10 project or a $500,000 project. So it's kind of hard to compare uh, projects across district. But we put money yeah. into every school, and we did uh, five or 10 projects across the district. Mm -hmm. Facility management is the biggest program, uh, $8.8 .8 million. Uh, Mr. Kraus manages. Uh, a significant portion of that goes to SWMB firms. Uh, this is hitting a $32 million backlog in maintenance that he has, so there's still a lot of uh, tough decisions to be made on which projects get done. These are two of the big ones shown here. Uh, West actually Head Start stormwater management and parking and uh, trailer renovations at last, and which were also done at a number of other <coughs> locations, including uh, Child Family Development Center at Mary Ford, uh, Cary Hersey, and, uh, and Cochrane. Next slide uh, shows another one of his bigger projects. This was traffic management, traffic support at Ladson Elementary School on Ladson Road. The picture on the right shows the two lanes, one in, one out, and the end product to the left are two lanes in and two lanes out. We've also got a turn lane off of Ladson. That was a big project that's helped with uh, throughput at that school. Uh, Relamping has been highly successful, uh, provides more efficient lighting and, and better lighting as well. The great thing about this program so far has been that after Ron pays for the light bulbs, he gets a rebate from SCNG. So we essentially just pay for the labor in the end to install these uh, new lighting systems. Outstanding. Some work in athletics. Uh, we made a big hit of that with capital improvements the last couple of years, so smaller projects shown there. Uh, flooring projects, one of Ron's uh, capital maintenance flooring uh, programs is whole building flooring <coughs> replacements. However, as you know, just like your most used room in your house at home, sometimes you've got to do flooring in individual rooms. And whether it be for use mm -hmm. or for change in use uh, by the school, you can see the 11 projects that were done this past year uh, with flooring. <coughs> Americans with Disabilities Act uh, improvements related to sidewalks, 11 projects, uh, got new sidewalks to provide uh, easier flow in and out uh, for those in wheelchairs. Playground program, which is also Mr. Cromps's, we've got about $825,000 that has gone into seven uh, different playgrounds at six different schools there on the left. And then also we've got uh, yearly maintenance, both in the rubber coating surface and the artificial turf. Uh, that will extend the service life uh, at, the, at the schools, respectively. And then I've just got uh, several slides here, which I'll motor through pretty quick. But the, the Mitchell one, I think, is a really good one on the left. You can see the wood chips on the left, and then the lower left, the new surface that's there, providing a better uh, playground environment for those kids, tracking less trash uh, into the building as well. Lambs, Ashley River Creative Arts, and then surface uh, maintenance, as I talked about, uh, talked about earlier. Uh, Emergency management, uh, they received $950,000 of the FY18 funds. The big project on the list was creating complete secure perimeter at Stahl High School uh, fencing. And it was also continuing on with replacement upgrades to the camera systems. Four schools were completed uh, worth about $485,000 and some other purchases there as well with FY18 money. IT has several slides. Um, student mobile device purchase, uh, refreshing end of life technology, service support and network ops. You can see the statistics uh, provided in each of the next four slides that was taken care of with IT money. You can see replacements of product supported uh, systems district-wide, sound systems, printers, digital signage outside, and other AV upgrades. Computer labs, uh, continual process to replace devices in those labs as well as devices for our teachers. Service and support. Uh, getting out to repair the equipment that's out there, extremely important, as well as projects under network ops. A uh, significant amount of money went into uh, IT, some good work done uh, in that department, uh, working side by side with uh, IDO. Media modernization, uh, big changes in this program really began in 18 and will continue on in 19. 
Uh, Christy James has done a, a really good job of prioritizing the work that needs to be done. These two pictures are the conversion of St. John's with some new furniture. Uh, so you've got some traditional furniture in the center and then the softer furniture uh, on the right. And it's really what we're trying to do in all of the libraries. You, again, you can see here Mount Zion, uh, typical desk on the left, and then softer furniture uh, on the right. Uh, some really good projects uh, happening out there. Pinehurst was completed this past year, as well as Google. <laughs> Furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, $1.2 million program. Uh, this is an example of more of a whole building uh, replacement, not complete whole building. You see the list of items that are provided uh, when we go into a school that, that really needs uh, more than just one or two classrooms. Humby Park uh, got a lot of the, the benefit of that program this past year. And then you can see the list on your following slide, slide number 24, some examples of Curio or continuing to outfit early college. Uh, Baptist Hill uh, received some equipment for CTE and Moultrie received some new teacher's tables. And then to support our Montessori programs, uh, you all voted to open up for Arson last year. We outfitted that school to start out that program. Uh, continued out with the growth of Murray Lassane and providing equipment to a furniture at Hershey. <coughs> Finally, the last one I'm going to show you is Fine Arts. 197000 was provided to this program. Uh, Katie provided, um, Katie Heinz McCormick provided strength to the schools that are listed there. So overall, um, overall, the plan right now is we're in the process of executing the FY19 funds that you gave us on 1 May. Uh, that's a $35 million program. We're about 70% complete with that. And we'll be coming to you in February with the FY20 proposals for you to consider as we go into the next year's budget cycle. Any questions? Oh, I still have that flex. Where's Bob? Bob playing football. <laughs> Bob's completely revamped the football helmet program. Uh, great job the last couple of years. And we're able to use excess resources to buy wrestling mats at a number of high schools. Okay. Yeah, I got CT as well. I thought I was done. Mm -hmm. CT program upgrades, that's another one of our programs. What else do I have here? Hey, you know I have these slides. <laughs> I got all you kinds of CT slides. Look at this. Look at these CT slides. You said you were done. I, I thought, thought I was done. done. I, that's the last slide I've got printed. You're going to bed too early. Crops over here keeps on working. <laughs> one, of the, one of the programs that you authorized for the first year this year, this past year, was auditorium upgrades. Uh, Sean Hughes picked this program up before he left, so looking at all of our high schools and recapitalizing equipment there and standardizing as well. So we've done some significant, made some significant progress along those lines. We have more auditorium to upgrade, and that's it. Pardon me, sir. We have more to do, and that's it. Yes, no, we're not done yet. Okay. We're not. We're not done in the high schools. We're we're taking the, the oldest systems uh, out first, and so we're not doing complete auditorium replacements. We're going across all the high schools and replacing the oldest equipment first, and, and keeping them at the at the same level. So uh, we will be coming back to ask for resources in auditorium mm -hmm. in FY20, and then transportation. Uh, you, were, you provide us funding this is to upgrade our camera and radio systems. And actually, this year coming up, we've we started to replace activity buses. You'll see that next year's report. Finally, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Great. That's a lot. Thanks. Any questions, anyone? I have one question, um, Jeff, for the roll code. I noticed there are a couple of schools that were part of the initial one cent referendum. So what's the what's the life on those um, surfaces? On the what kind of cut? What did you call the roll code? The roll code, right? On page nine. Is Woody here? Yes, sir. Look at that, Woody's here. I was going to answer the question, but I knew Woody was here. What you got? What you so got Woody, stand up. Tell us about the roll code, real quick. He loves talking about this stuff. Woody's handed this program off, by the way. <laughs> um, so we started about five or six years ago with all the bonded rubber, which was the first set of the, the thicker rubber shreds that we did. Mm -hmm. And um, this year was the first year that we um, came into the downtown schools that were built. And so we're on a three to five year schedule of re Regluing those is basically all you're doing okay. because the UV, UV rays break down the glue. Okay. Okay, so, so it keeps it in place and it'll, it adds to the service and, and life. So, of those. so, what's that about a seven to ten year service life on them? Um, depending on whether we put shades Shade. over them okay. and, and the size of the school and the use, we could potentially get anywhere 12 to 15 years out of it as well. Okay, gotcha. All right. 
All right, so ne next up, uh, the Mr. Miller, the phase three sales tax program recap. Mm -hmm. uh, we had lined up Mr. Brett Johnson, who was the chair of the Citizens Oversight Committee to speak with us today. Unfortunately, uh, with the timing of this meeting, he had a conflict, but uh, Reggie is handed out. Did he hand those out yet? Yeah, he did, yeah, he did. So Reggie's handed out yeah, uh, the phase three report, and Mr. Johnson thought this was a good idea to, hand, to have something to hand over uh, to the phase four chairman who's finishing the last couple of projects. We've got Stono Park, as you know, we've got the District 3 bus lot, which is not done, uh, but the remainder of the, the big projects were completed and he wanted to codify that, document that, and he wanted to talk to you a little bit about the success of this program and catch the current board members before the transition, uh, because we're really almost done with the phase three program. So you've got this document to take a look at when you have a chance, and we'll get Mr. Johnson uh, back to provide a few minutes of oversight and, and answer some questions for you. All right. So I have one question that ought to not take more than 10 seconds to answer. Um, the ballot question, tab C, yep. tell us the projects on here that are not yet complete. Which page? Tab your C. Ballot tab C. So the seismic evaluations are not yet complete. So items five through 10 are not final. <clears throat> oh, you said five through ten. Five through ten. Okay. Item number twenty-six is about ninety-five percent complete, Mr. McNeil. True. I'd say about ninety-nine point five. Ninety-nine point five percent complete. <laughs> and as you know, di line item twenty-seven. I wish I could get that one done for you. Mm -hmm. That one's not complete. Mm -hmm. And line item twenty-four. Stono Park's not complete, line item 24. Okay. All the athletic improvements? Are complete. Well, you got the punch list, but the project's done, correct? Yes, we done at the uh, Rep Building at Burke? We, we are not done at the Rep Building at Burke. Uh, Mr. McNeil's finishing the new entrance. Well, that'll, be that'll be done next, that'll be done by next time. Yes. The Rep, the, I'm sorry, the new, the new entrance at Burke will be done by next summer. Gotcha. We finish the punch list on 19. <coughs> punch list is done in Angel Oak, correct? Yes. And then we did not, on item number 31, we did not buy land in Carolina Bay because we have the C.E. Williams site in Carolina Bay right now okay. as, a, as a usable site in the future because we're building. So we're not going to buy that land, so then it's done. We bought the Angle side in Carolina Park. Correct. The choir, right. right. The only the only thing that would change that in the future is if that long savanna mm -hmm. really drives forward, <laughs> uh, we might need to consider another mm -hmm. plot of land. It probably will not come out of this that's project. Yeah. It's going to have to come out of another sales tax. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Oh yeah, honey. I think Pete mentioned that we saw. We got. Annual energy. Yep. yep. Annual energy up there. Uh -huh. sure. Jeff, what you got? Would you uh, would you like to if you'd like if you have the slides we can flip through those or just look at the cover sheet. I'm not sure if you if you have the slides. We're doing give us the high level. Yeah. Continue to save energy, eight percent energy uh, intensity reduction over the last four years. Um, we continue to grow our footprint, um, but we continue to save energy. Our uh, operating budget is tweaked down a little bit, even with our partnership with Synergistic. Uh, we're in the fourth year of that five-year partnership, and I'm trying to very carefully weigh whether we'll extend that contract beyond five years. I don't think so at this point, but I think the energy program is in good shape, and I think there's a culture of energy savings. We um, offer rebates of uh, $325,000 to all the different schools for their partnership in energy usage and, and procedures before the holiday breaks, unplugging refrigerators and things like that. We do seven energy audits at every school every year. And so I, I think we're trying to, we're doing a good job improving the culture, energy saving culture in the schools. Um, at one point, we'll come to you and talk about what's called an energy savings performance contract. It's the last bullet on the last slide, where we'll partner or, or hope to partner with a large um, energy service provider like a train or someone like that who brings financing to the table we develop energy projects that have a return on investment over 10 years, and we use the energy savings to pay 
the financing or the, the cash that that big vendor brings up front. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. That allows us to leverage uh, those funds against the capital maintenance program, allow us to do more kind of capital maintenance with someone else's money and finance it with energy savings. So that, that's a very exciting. Is your trend uh, about, about 18 years of trend, looking at or 18 years? Uh, the, the slide you're looking at, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I think in, I'm not sure when the, the baseline was established, but it was established as a year 2000 baseline. Yeah, that's I think it's over 20, 20 years. Yeah, this yes. is from 2020, so. Right, so we're. So so ten, we're is that 10% base That rate? is a, I think it's a 1% reduction per, per year. year. Right, and so, so we're, we're, be, we're beating that. And so that will be that, be that percent per year. Well, no, because it goes from 50. To 40. Um, let's see. It's over 20 years. Yeah, so it's going to be that 10%. It's got to be. Well, maybe it's going to be starting. You also that people just start making the bad. No, ten points would be twenty percent, right? Yeah. So twenty percent reduction. Out of fifty-five, what are, are you looking at this slide, sir? Yes. So we're going down ten points, which would be twenty percent mm. from fifty. So it's a percent per year, and we're beating that. So the fifty to forty. Right? That's correct, right? Yeah, that's correct. So fifty-five is the highest. What you saying? Well, that's just the scale that's shown. We started out at about 50. That was the, where we were at in uh, okay. the year 2000. Okay. We don't, we don't, use, we don't, use, any, we don't use any solar, do we? Yeah. Sir? Are we use any solar? We do not, not yet, no, sir. Are there, are there grants that we can get uh, almost free solar for us? I wouldn't say um, free. I, I came to the board maybe three years ago with a proposal and um, mm -hmm. we, we, you decided not to do that now but if, if at any point you'd like me to take that up and start considering I'm happy to I, I would like you to get at least on some of our buildings we can try to solar maybe some library or something that's the same <laughs> somewhere and see how it goes especially with, with the with the, uh, the government incentives now mm -hmm. I know the other rebates cover about half of it I don't know for a school district but I know privately it covers over half of the public so we'll be probably able to do that if you'd like I can do some investigation and bring back to yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, is that information that we're looking for? I mean, what are you, is, what, what are you asking for, Reverend? Oh, well, that's what you said. Talking about the energy reduction? Like, so I said, all we're also doing is solar. Right now, the government has a lot of grants out where you can get a, a big discount on over half off on solar, you know, solar, solar system. What it does, it'll, it'll, it'll deplete your light bill uh, at some point, but then it'll, it'll reduce it initially right away. Then in the future, you own your system and you won't have to pay much of a light bill at all. So I said, if you're looking at that, can I let us know what you find or, or proposal? Keep up on three years ago, but we didn't do anything about it. I, what, I, what I'd love to see is if the board really wants us to consider this as a majority. We don't mind doing it, but mm -hmm. we we didn't get it passed the last time we put some significant effort into it. Oh, okay. And I'm just... Yeah, I'm right. saying. That's why I was asking you. Yeah. Is if there's, if so does the majority of the board want the staff to do that kind of investigating? Are we interested in? The thinking before was that you had a bunch of brand new roofs that you didn't want to risk putting people on top of them and, and possibly losing your uh, warranty. You know, solar? Yeah, yeah. What, what about the ones, I'm, the I'm ones that can go in uh, on the ground? Uh, I'm not you build sure the right around. Have them do that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not asking you. To, I don't want you to do a bunch of work. If the board is interested in, maybe give us a minimum proposal or some ideas or some, can we get some a information. Can we get? Can we take a quick consensus to see any board members interested in having them do that work? I'm Kevin? not interested for this year. I no. don't have enough Kevin. information. Nah. Yeah, I, I want information that I want, not to do work. I want information on it. Somebody got to somebody got to get the work though, because yeah, somebody got to research it. Information, so. And if it's not, well, going to do research. Yeah, so I, that's what we want to read. The information is what I really want. Well, see if we have consensus. If not, we, we don't have a consensus. We don't have a consensus. No. But maybe that'd be something for us to look at for the right. Absolutely. Right now, right. we need okay. to focus on next year's. All right, we got a transportation report from Jeff Scott. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Miller. That, uh, Reports in your packet. Um, just to add to that, for new state buses, we expect another eight special needs buses, new buses from the state to come in before winter break. Good, good. Um, to add to the fleet, that should put us at 45% uh, state bus fleet replacement since 2015. Good, good. So uh, we definitely see that the um, shape of the state fleet improving, and we've also been working with them on growth. Okay. issues we know that's the mm -hmm. next big piece yeah. since they started talking about um 
we're sort of replacing the buses that we actually started ahead of time to talk about growth. We've made some progress in that, and that um, Superintendent Spearman is planning on putting another $6 million in her budget proposal for this year mm -hmm. to just deal with the growth of bus fleet. We have allocated for us in that, in that hopefully the first pot of money, um, and that we qualify for another 30 state buses that will come in and serve us so we can relieve um, some of the Durham buses from the fleet. Okay. These will be new buses. If I can add to that, Jeff's downplaying how much work uh, the staff did to justify the additional buses. He worked, he's basically worked for the last year and a half to prove to them bus th our bus count and what we need. And e even if those 30 buses don't come to us right away, they have committed to the funding to pay for those. Good. That's right. good. Right. So that's, that's a significant positive impact on our GOF uh, mm -hmm. in the end mm -hmm. by having the funding for those 30 buses and then eventually we'll get the buses right. because we pay mm -hmm. for Durham buses right. without having that. Right. Durham call. So the, uh, <coughs> are you saying that we normally buy buses out of GOF instead of capital? No, sir. We pay, we pay our oh, monthly oh, bill. Oh, oh. The Durham buses obviously because they're using their bus. Right. Uh, we pay more money for them than we do because the state covers their bus, their maintenance, and their fuel. Mm -hmm. So we really don't pay anything for the bus. Mm -hmm. Um, on that side of the house. So the more, especially now that they actually have a fleet that is more healthy, that it behooves us to look at, can we get more of that um, to reduce our, our GOF outlay of just paying a contractor uh, for the use of their buses. So if, uh, if we get paid more buses in the state, will the CCSC operate those buses or will we get General to Durham to operate? No, sir. We just it just changes the fleet it doesn't change mm -hmm. anything to do with drivers or who yeah. runs the buses I mean, it's just okay. uh adding we there we have thir basically let's do, use this we have 30 routes right mm -hmm. now that are currently served by a durham bus mm -hmm. that qualify for state buses state like buses. we're right. running the children that the state bus says mm -hmm. qualifies for it mm -hmm. so all we're going to do is put a state bus on that route and relieve a Durham bus from duty on that route. So, so all right, I understand what you're saying. So, if, so if, our, if our bus that we get in the state replaces Durham bus, hmm? will, we, will we save money from using Durham bus? That would be the savings that yes. we don't have to pay Durham to use our bus. They're using our bus now. Correct. Yes. Correct. That's yeah. Yeah. Us. Yeah. So, so, what, so what, we just buy the few, or the state pays that few? No, they, they, they pay, pay all that. We only pay Durham for the driver for that right, route. No, so, it, so it's a contract worded that we take advantage of that savings because they're not using their bus. Correct. We get right. We pay. We use as many state buses as we can, mm -hmm. and then we pay a different rate, obviously for the Durham bus because they're paying for fuel and the capital cost of having bus. Yeah. Right. Oh, I like to see when you finish. Uh, what proposal potential savings we're looking at for thirty new buses? Just right at five hundred thousand dollars in GOF a year. Yeah. For thirty for thirty buses. Yes. Sir. Just the difference in the cost from well, we the two, have to two pay sets. To maintain uh, I understand. It's the same small for 30 buses. So. Well, it's the difference. Mm -hmm. It's the difference in the, in the savings. Payment. Yeah. And also reducing the bus breakdown time, too, because every time we get new buses, we put them in rotation, too. Correct. So, yeah. yeah. So the loss of structural time will also decrease as well. Mm. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. How will a contract with Durham or probably off we start entertaining that? In two years out, huh? So if, if I can comment, we, we've met with Durham a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, we are uh, developing a supplemental contract mm -hmm. to help us acquire the number of drivers we need to meet all the routes. Durham knows that. We haven't put it on the street yet. That's a short-term fix. <coughs> That takes us for the next year. That would take us to the next year and a half. The rest of this year and one more year. In the workshop in January for the board, Jeff will be Jeff Scott will be coming forward with options for the next contract. Mm -hmm. Question again for to, to present to you. You're helping them fill the driver slot. We're not helping them yet, but what we're looking at is is potentially going out on the street and hiring a small contract contractor to provide drivers drivers and routes for the, the bus routes to, to cover the routes that Durham has not been able to meet. Why, I'm just curious, why is that? They're not able to, to meet the demand or? Correct. So you would significantly have to pay a driver more than based on the 
transportation rate in the low country right now, correct? We don't we don't know that because we haven't bid the project but yet, but if there are contractors out there with buses and route and drivers, mm. it might not necessarily be more expensive. And when Durham doesn't complete the route, Jeff Scott's got the money from that right. route okay. that's not being accomplished. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's not we're not gonna ask for more money. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Nope. Next is a capital project support. Yes, I'd like to present the September uh, report to you all. The revenues revenues collected in August were 732,000 below the 2% projection. Um, the expenses for the 1722 program for the month were $8 million. The expenditures for the 2010 through 2016 program were 2.9 million. And as uh, already mentioned, our fixed cost of ownership 19 program is underway. Sounds good. Any questions for anyone? No? With that being said, Operations Committee is...